For third priority on tools, you're going to want to also purchase the electric blue marker, frost blue. You're going to want the clear blender as well as cool gray number five. So these four new colors will be in addition to the three that you already own. If you can, go ahead and just purchase all of them at the same time, but for sure you'll need these first and then these later on in the semester. What we're going to do with the two blues is I'm going to show you how to make a white dress shirt with denim pants. And then the pink that you already own, we can use that for doing our sparkly sheer layer silk prom dress. And then on this example, I used green for doing a wool jacket. But if you want, you can just use the same brown that you have for their hair to make the jacket. And then we're going to use the cool gray to learn to make black for the boots. Plus, you'll use cool gray for other things as well for doing shadows and stuff. So these are required for the class. I also recommend if you want to buy a few other colors, you could get the warm gray number five. So that'll complement the cool gray number five. So you can choose between the two according to your project. And then it's also nice to have a lighter gray. So then there's cool gray and warm gray number two. So these I recommend, but you do not have to purchase them. Something else that is required is going to be a silver jelly roll metallic pen. And then I recommend, if you want, you can also buy the white jelly roll pen, and there's also a gold metallic jelly roll pen. The advantages of these pens is this will color on top of anything. So if you made something black, this will still go on top of it. For doing any kind of fixes, so if you accidentally went over too far with your markers and you want to do a fix on your project, you can use the Recollections, Recollections White. So this is an opaque marker. And so this marker will go on top of the color itself if you need to do some kind of a fix. So again, that's white opaque recollections marker with the wide tip. Something else for doing corrections, but also for doing a, a new technique that I'm going to show you. There is the correction paint pen. And there's two things about this. Number one, the tip of it is a ballpoint, just like on the tip of a normal pen for writing. But also, these are soft, so you can squish the sides. And you shake it to stir up the paint, and then you can start painting with white co uh, correction fluid. And then the advantage of this is, after I have corrected something, I can come back, let it dry completely, and I can still draw on top of this. Another version is this one, where it looks like a pen, but it still has the wide middle section, and it's squishy. And again, it's the ballpoint. So either one of these is fine. Something else that I recommend is to have just a thicker piece of fabric. So basically, this is corduroy. And you'll notice with your markers when you first open them up that sometimes the tip will have a big giant drop of ink on there. And so sometimes I'll just touch this first onto some fabric and then I'll start coloring. Also, if you go to the section in um, like Walmart or Target and they'll have like camping gear and stuff and they'll have these little uh, cinch sacks and something like this is great for putting all of your markers and pens and stuff in here. So again, that's something that I just recommend. When you're at the store looking at markers, there also are uh, Sharpie Metallic Silver 
in Sharpie metallic gold. One of the cool things about these is just that it has the wider tip on there. So if you need to make a larger area, metallic silver or metallic gold, these are nice. Whereas on the little jelly ones, the tips on these are really tiny. So it's just a little ball point. So this is for doing a lot of little tiny details. So for sure, you're gonna want to have the silver jelly roll. And then later on in time, you might find that you'll also want to have the wider tip on there. So it just depends on how much you're going to be using uh, a metallic effect on your designs. Something else that is also required, you're going to want to have a piece of tulle. So this is tulle fabric. And the level of this would be considered fine or light weight. What we're going to use this for is when we do our dress, the upper layer, which is the sheer see-through layer, we're going to use this tool in order to get the texture here on her dress. And hopefully a lot of you already have tool from your sewing projects or you know someone who has tool. If not, you can easily find this at the fabric stores. And um, you can just purchase the smallest amount, which would be one eighth of a yard, and it'll be super cheap. It should be only like 70 cents or something. But make sure you have a piece that's large enough so then your model can go underneath there. And I'm gonna show you a technique for using the tool to get the texture up onto your drawing. There are other sizes of tool, and later on in time, as you design more and more, you might choose different sizes for different reasons. So this is a larger tool. Um, it would be called larger or heavier weight. And then this one here is getting to be so large that it might even be called mesh instead of tool. And you'll notice that this starts to look like fishnet stockings. This one here just looks like a, a thicker sheer layer for like maybe a really uh, foofy wedding gown. And then going with the lightweight, you'll notice there's different patterns. Like one will look more like diamonds and one will look more like little hexagons. So it's up to you over time what your preferences are. But in the beginning, you want to have at least one piece of a lightweight tool. In this class, after you have colored and rendered your girl and it's completely finished, you're going to notice that the Ben Thing paper that she's on is very see-through. And so this is a bad thing for your finished project. Ah, I shouldn't say that. I'm going to just start over. So once you've done a complete rendering on the Ben Thing paper with your markers and colored pencils and inks, you're going to notice that the girl is still see-through, so other layers will show through. So when you're getting ready to do a presentation, you're going to want her to be more solid. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up gluing this to the back of a new piece of paper, so then it'll be like this. And how we're going to do that is you're going to use some of the Super 77 glue. And this does come in smaller cans, so for this semester, go ahead and just buy the smaller can. Some of you already own this or have something similar to this. Just make sure that the one you're using is safe for photos, which means it won't have all these acids and stuff in there and it won't turn your project yellow. So that's the most important thing is make sure it says photo safe. Then after we um, after we glue our girl to a fresh piece of paper, eventually what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them out and we're gonna stick them onto a background to display everything with the fabrics as well as the Pantone colors and having a cool background and everything. And how we're gonna do this is we're gonna use rubber cement. And you're gonna wanna have rubber cement. And same thing, make sure it says something about photo safe or acid free. So it doesn't matter what brand you get, but it has to be acid free or photo safe. And again, that way it does not turn your artwork yellow. And one other thing you're gonna want is, this is a rubber cement remover. And basically what it is, is just a block of dried rubber cement. And you're gonna use this to clean off all of the old rubber cement. So you'll have to have one of these. 
it's easy to find rubber cement anywhere like Target and Walmart, but it's really hard to find these. So when you go to purchase your uh, markers from an art store, you're going to see that you can find these easier as well. When we're doing our uh, fabric, when we're attaching our fabric to the board here, the rubber cement does not work very well with fabric at all. So what you're going to want is to use a hot glue gun. Most of you will probably already have a hot glue gun. If you're going to go buy one, just buy the cheapest one that there is. So somewhere from Target or Walmart. And I've even seen hot glue guns in the 99 cent store. And then uh, when you're there, they'll have some of the replacement glue pouches. And you don't need very many for this semester. So if this already comes with like three more glue sticks, it's probably all that you're going to need for the semester. But if it only comes with the one glue stick inside of here and there's another pack of glue sticks, make sure you get more. And again, you're going to use this to glue down the fabrics to your boards. Now, when it comes time to cut your girl out, to cut all the white paper away, something that I like to use is an X-Acto knife. Along with using the X-Acto knife, you're going to want to have some kind of a cutting mat. And in your kitchen, you probably already have something like this. If not, make sure you get one when you purchase this. Or if you're at a store like Target or Walmart, you can go to the kitchen section and just look for some kind of a cut mat. If you're used to using scissors, you can use scissors as much as possible on your figure, but eventually you'll need to cut in between her arms or in between her legs, and you have to have an X-Acto knife in order to do that. So basically, that's all of the tools for this semester. Um, if there's anything I'm forgetting, I'll remind you as we go. And then also, at the beginning of each demo, when we start using these tools, I'm going to give you a lot more detailed information on how to use the tools and why we're choosing the different brands that we're using. And so you'll see once we get to those parts of the demonstrations in this class. In this class, for the third priority list of tools, you're going to need two different binders. One of them is going to be your 8.5 by 11 for when we do our writing assignment. And you're going to want something to cover this up so you have a nice presentation. And again, this is something that you'll be using for like a job interview or if you transfer on to another school. Uh, this is the really basic ones where it's just two clear sheets and this little plastic spine and it pops out so then when you put your papers in there it'll snap them back into place. If you have a fashion class that already re requires that you have a presentation book so that again this is just more empty clear sheets um, you'll notice that you probably will have a lot of sheets left over from your other class so if you want to you can also use that presentation book in this class as well and you'll just have a section where it will be your target consumer and your brief and color palette and everything. The other required binder is going to be a presentation book that is 11 by 14. You'll notice there's several different brands that have these presentation books and I found that the Dick Blick ones are the least expensive but they're still a really good quality. So they have the plastic cover on here and then all of the sheets are laminated permanently inside the book so you can't add more pages but it gives you quite a bit you won't even use all of these pages and then also each page comes with a black piece of construction paper inside of there that fits perfectly and that way when you put a project on this side and then you flip it over to this side if your paper was kind of see-through you still won't have any issues with that and again, the reason why it's 11 by 14 is because all of the drawings we're going to do are on this 11 by 14 marker paper. And the croquis that I'm teaching you is also going to be on the 14 inch paper as well. So make sure you get the 11 by 14. And then you'll see as the semester progresses, we're going to be doing some jeans with a white dress shirt, a heavyweight jacket with some glossy boots, and then we'll have our prom dress. And then you're going to go ahead and do your target consumer. And so your target consumer handout will go inside of here. And then you're also going to do your own designs. So you'll have a mood board and a season. 
And then you're going to have look number one plus the fabric and Pantone chips, look number two, look number three, again with your fabric swatches and Pantones and backgrounds. So eventually yours will look something like this, but it'll be your original designs all inside this book. And then towards the end here, we'll have a whole bunch of your thumbnails from all of your different drawings that you were doing, your floats and thumbnails. And there will still be lots of pages left over. And what I recommend is once you have, like your collection goes into a fashion show and you do photo shoots and stuff, you might want to do big printouts at 11 by 14 and you can put those printouts inside of your showing garments that you've made and your collection up on the runway. So in the end, this will make a really great presentation. Again, when you go apply at another school to get your bachelor's degree or if you're already ready to go out and start doing job interviews.